G'day legends, I hope that you're doing really well. Now this video has been inspired actually of someone I'm a big fan of and that I know at least through the internet being Garand Thumb. Uh, he does a lot of breakdowns of equipment he uses in the field for military stuff and sort of your escape and evasion. Now I've actually wanted to do this for a little bit and sort of break down what kit I carry into the field as a war journalist and how this kit changes for the type of operation. Now Firstly, I guess of who am I, who am I to speak on this? Now, I don't have decades and decades of experience like a lot of guys will. I served in the Australian Infantry uh, for about six and a half years. I deployed to Afghanistan uh, and I've been in this job for almost two years now. And I've taken a lot of that experience into the kit I have. And I think I carry some bits of equipment which I don't see other guys carrying that they absolutely I think should be in some areas, but as well, I'm actually missing a few bits of critical kit here that I should have that I didn't bring for this specific uh, AO where I am, being, of course, in Israel. Now, we are still in an active war zone, so my body armor will actually still be staying on me. There was a missile strike only uh, just behind here a few days ago. It's about 600 meters to the border fence. Now, firstly, what I want to go over is what you wear day to day and a people it's almost a meme online that i wear the same equipment every day and that that is true um i have this blue shirt on underneath which is just my go-to blue shirt and a, a normal t-shirt and sort of the go-to dress for journalists has always been like blue jeans never underestimate the power of blue jeans one you can run in them you can work in them they're hardy they're not expensive you can get them anywhere but also this they're, they're inconspicuous if you take off this shit, you're just in blue jeans and you can wear them going to a meeting, walking in the field, whatever you need. So I think there's a lot also in that and as well as like decent hardy tops and as well, even just sun coverage, cold, whatever. Like this is a, it's a Carhartt jacket. So things that you can wear in the field that are able to be worn in other places because you won't wear much. Now, something else just too is I don't travel with Pelican cases and equipment like that us video like video stuff we have a lot of expensive equipment and i see the appeal for pelican cases the problem is the ability to move fast when we're with them is limited so i have two packs i have this pack here which is a plat attack uh tropical pack i think a tropical spur and another larger sort of hiking style bag but this is my carry-on so it carries all my expensive kit in, in this but it's also large enough you'll see that it's fairly empty but it's large enough that I can move everything critical into this and leave the other bag. To the other bag, if I need to leave and only have one bag on me for whatever reason, even if that is just moving quickly, that I can ditch it. It's just got my socks and undies and maybe some charging cables, but my computer, my memory cards, my cameras, everything critical, my medical, everything is going to be in this and can fit in this with no real problem. I'm not stuffing around with that. So I think that is a big thing. But also as well, you on the ground, like how big is your footprint on the ground? Now, this is something that is a problem because journals are trying to, I guess, increase their footprint by, there's, you're contacting people to try and get contacts, you're using fixes, you're doing whatever. And there are some good ways to get information, but also some ways that people share a lot of information. People tell barbers a lot, hairdressers a lot. People tell taxi drivers a lot. So, you know, as well, don't think that, you know, Israel is you know, probably a safer for some of this, at least for the enemy players in this, as far as uh, foreign intelligence. I'm, I'm guess I'm, I'd be sure it is here, but not as much as some other nations you may work in. But foreign intelligence use things like that to collect a lot of information. And when you, that you are in, you know, areas of that too, you need to be cognizant of that. You get a taxi somewhere, an Uber somewhere, watch your GPS, watch where you're actually going. Maybe don't get picked up from Airbnb. Maybe walk out around a corner and then go from there. I could speak on those little simple things for days and days but we're going to go over this as well as even just things like sim cards i prefer physical sim cards rather than e-sims because i feel like i can I, well, I can move a sim card phone to phone and we'll talk about having multiple phones as well and just having a number just having a phone number helps if you need to verify your facebook login e-sim i don't know how to do it there's probably a way to do it but i just don't really know as well a big one off the bat is wear your seatbelt in the car it's very common for, in areas like this, you're like, well, I, I don't want to wear this. More journalists, war journalists are killed in car accidents than anything else. Wear your seatbelt, as well as wear this thing as much as you can 
as well. Yes, it doesn't provide the protection that this does. Yes, they're uncomfortable. Wear your helmet as much as possible. As I say, me not wearing it here, but I think my real risk here is fairly low, at least in the position where I am. Now, what you do want to carry as well is foreign currencies and also other currency you may be able to use. So when I was in Ukraine and Russia first invaded, there was no ATMs available, nothing. Didn't have enough USD, was caught out. And there's a story of the guys I was with, they bought a car with Bitcoin to be able to get out. So look at other things like that. Now, if you're wondering why I'm looking down, I have got an amount of notes on this. As you also need to be cognizant that in this equipment, you do look military. From a silhouette position, whatever, you look like you're in the, look, if I take this off, you look, you look through a site, you do look like you're in the military. And you need to be cognizant of that. And you also need to learn about what separates you from uh, the enemy as well. You are, you're not, well, in a country like this, you are not the target of the friendly forces you're working around. Of course, but at the end of the day, you're wearing this stuff. I was on a roof here the other day and apparently almost got shot by a sniper. They radioed through like, who the hell is this on the roof? The only reason they knew that I was most likely friendly was Hamas, who's you know, working behind us in the tunnels. They don't wear helmets. Very often they're not wearing helmets. I was wearing a helmet. And they were like, that seems like one of ours, if it is wearing a helmet. As well, just little bits and pieces too. Like keep your car full of fuel and have local emergency numbers. I know this all seems like very simple stuff, but at the end of the day, Little bits and pieces like that could save your life, as well as copies of documents as well. So let's actually go over this kit. I know we've got there a long time. Now, there are bits and pieces in this kit that are broken down. One is I'm using camera gear here, uh, as well as I've got shit everywhere. But Rode wireless microphones, uh, first time actually using these on a trip, these are worth their weight in gold. This thing recharges, USB-C, fantastic. Try and keep everything in one type of charge if you can. So most of my stuff is all USB-C. So you can have one type of cable, whatever. If you can do that, the better. As well as try and have things in little cases and stuff like this really helps. Now, military thing. The stuff you use the most, put on the outside of your pack. The things that you need to get to quickly or use the most, outside of your pack. Other things that you're not using as much, inside the actual pack. So you'll see the stuff I use most outside of the pack or most critical to get to, as well as the most critical keep on you. Now, body armor like this, we don't have bullets, bombs, grenades, whatever. So it's great. It's a lot lighter, but try and get good plates too. The money you spend, it's worth the weight decrease and the uh, armor protect. So, you know, these plates, which are cheaper plates, have lower protection than level four. They're level three plus, which you really want to be at level four, and they are heavier. But on the body armor, I always carry two tourniquets. So I have a tourniquet on each side. Easy to get, I say easy to get to, as I can't get one of them out but I always have two ready to go to get to and specifically folded to get on in an emergency if I need. So minimum two tourniquets on person and I always put one of those in a pocket or something if I'm just walking around an area without this on, if I'm just getting a coffee, you know, down in the city or somewhere like this. As well as if you want to buy a bit of kit, if, you, if you're a bit of a kit whore, buy Leatherman Raptors like these. Leatherman Raptors, trauma shears, this is the best bit of kit I've ever owned. I've owned these in the army for years. These are years and years old. These could be, I don't know. These could be seven, eight years old. Still work perfectly. We'll cut through any of this nylon stuff. Amazing, amazing bit of kit. Just buy them. You won't regret it. I carry those instead of a knife. I just do. I know people say it's silly not carry a knife, but I don't. Now, another bit of kit. These are expensive, but if you can, hearing protection. Good hearing protection. Active Hearing Pro if you can. So you can actually hear people around you speaking and hear footsteps better, whatever, and cuts down on loud noises such as gunshots, artillery, whatever. This is a very, very handy thing to have if you can get it. As well, more medical equipment. I should carry more medical aid on me, but I just don't. It's actually in this pocket here, which I should know my pockets better on this. I have a small military IFAC here. Very simple, very simple in this. It's SAM chest seals, so a full sucking chest wound, as well then uh, as some gauze, gloves, things like that as well. And even casualty cards to break down if there is a casualty, so to then hand over 
uh, than to a medic. Now, there is a NATO standard for the casualty cards, but I just use the normal NATO standard one. And I just figure, like, that's the one I'm used to. That's what I'm going to do. And a medic will understand that handover if you need. But good medical gear, something I see journalists just don't carry. They just don't carry. They don't carry tourniquets. Don't carry field dressings like these. Well, people, you, you're meant to stop calling them Israeli bandages, but that's always what I've called them. Or chest seals, things like that. Worth its weight in gold. But it's useless if you don't know how to use it. Train with it. Learn how to do it. Don't use the tourniquets you train with. I know it's become like a thing. People say, oh, it's fine. Just do it. Don't do it. They're, they're cheap enough. Buy good ones. Buy good tourniquets. There's lots and lots of fakes out there. Now, some little bits and spares, pieces of spares. Cable ties, zip ties, whatever you like to call them. Screwdriver, flathead. Figure, flathead, you'll still be able to bash it into a Phillips head and get it out. But you can use this as leverage. And realistically as well, you can carry this, no problem. And yeah, you never know. Um, as well as the almighty duct tape. Never forget, never forget that at all. And then we want to sort of go through from front to back. And of course, the back is what we're going to use the least in the equipment. We're just going to put it all out here and I can show you guys a few things. Now, one thing that I did do not have in this kit that I should have, and I was silly not to bring it, is I always carry a soya water filter. They can filter like 10,000 litres of water, but the only thing is you need to make sure, you need to make sure that you have spare O-rings because if the O-ring's gone, the filter, it doesn't matter. So I always carry in one of these front ones as well. Again, critical bit of kit. It just all folds down tiny, sits in the bottom. So it sits underneath things I might get used to more. Uh, is that little soy filter. I don't have it here. I should have it 100%. That is on me for not having it. Although I do figure the environment I'm working in here, I'm always going to have access to water, but that's not a good enough excuse. So then we'll move into just the front pocket on this bag. Now, carry documents with you all the time. Typically, these are in my pocket unless my bag is on my back. Documents all the time. Passport, put it in a bloody protector. People think it's cool to have a beaten up passport. It's not. It's not, because if you lose it, you're stuffed. This passport is, I, this is due to expire, 10 years. 10 years, look, it's almost perfect. Put it in this. You stuff that up somewhere where there's not an embassy, like, you know, when I was working in Ukraine, there's, the, the embassy left. You know, you're in a lot more hurt, as well as any documents as far as if you press credentials, whatever, put it in something that makes it look more official, makes it look better on your behalf. And just make sure you carry them as well. Again, you live from your phone, from batteries, from whatever. So my phone's USB-C, all my gear is USB-C, have a decent power bank, make sure it's charged every night, even if you just use it a little piece as well. Spare phone, always, always carry a spare phone. Even just down to, you, you just walk, after a walk, you drop your phone in the water, how do I get back to my hotel? Always spare phone. Always make sure it's charged as well. Like checking spare tires on your vehicle, as well as I carry some basic drugs. So, of course, I'm carrying just headache tablets, a known of pens, pencils, and there are just some more prescription tablets in here as well. What are, uh, I do carry Doxy, which is a sort of all over, fucking hell. Um, uh, antibiotic, uh, just cuts, scrapes, whatever, as well as I have just some personal meds in there as well, because as you know, my um, my health is a little bit over the place. But in that too, I've got um, some just masks, like your typical mask you put on, actually the like the 3M uh, N95 mask, which I'm sure you become familiar with. Now, we're not using it for the case we became familiar with those. Using it in case you're in like a dusty environment. When I was in Turkey for the earthquake, that's something we had a lot of. We don't know if there was asbestos. We don't know. A lot of the dust. Carrying those N95 masks, one, you might get asked to put one on a plane, but secondly, you know, something like that can come massively, massively in handy. Now, this front part for me is basically like cords, random bits and pieces. So, as well, sleeve with batteries. Lithium batteries, doing a lot of artillery out there. Lithium batteries, are a prick to travel with. They are a pain in the ass. Put them in one of these cases. If you can get one that's rated to have lithium batteries, great. If it's not rated, to be honest, they see it in a case, bullshit baffles brains. They think it's official, do it. These batteries, you know, are over $100 each. Put them in something as well as, again, more spare USB-C cables. Normal USB 3 to USB-C. 
as well as USB-C to USB-C, you're just going to want them. And as well, charger for two batteries at once. You never know when you might need something to actually film on your camera. You do a live cross, zoom call, whatever. Get one of these little selfie sticks. You get it at the airport for like $15. Now, my kit is just going to be an absolute mess here in front of us, as well as power plugs. Make sure you get ones with adapters as well for where you're going and for other places you might be going whilst you're there. Now, as well with documents, wallet on you all the time, forms of identification, headphones in here too. Now, I have multiple SIM cards all through this bag as well, but in actual holders. So we're gonna get down into then this next zipper compartment. This is one of the best things I've bought. This is actually new for this trip. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like Pi Tech or Jai Tech or something. It's PGY, I think. This is just a little holder with like an aluminium case, but it's got rubber on it that holds SD cards, SIM cards, and actually has one of these, a little SIM card remover, which I cannot tell you how many times I've been in a hotel room or out in the street in a foreign country trying to fuck around putting a physical SIM card in a phone with something. But you can also put your SIM cards in there. But I don't keep all the SIM cards I own in this. I never go and just get one SIM card, go get multiples. Just in case you have to snap one, throw it out, replace the SIM card for some reason, or you lose this thing. You could lose this. So I also have as well, it's basically just a little plastic sleeve in here that has a SIM card remover as well as my other SIM card in that, in case I misplace one of those. And there's just some little patches and random bits and pieces in there. But that's the sort of equipment that then I do not want to lose. Now, we open up the primary compartment of this bag. Hard water. I don't care for where it's having canteens or whatever. If you want military canteens or whatever, have them. Hard water over camelbacks. My whole career I've done it. It's easy to track how much you've actually had rather than a camelback squeezing down. And well, these ones maybe not, but it's harder to pierce. You're not gonna sit down and pierce it like normal. Now this bag does have some zipper compartments in this as well. It is dark out here. I wish this bag had uh, compartments that actually had um, like colors in them, like a bright color. One might not be great in the field, but you can see further down into these bags. Now this is something I think, I think a lot of people might think is overkill, but I do not think at all. Now, when I was in Ukraine with far greater risk, this got moved into one of these side apartments, but this is a really high-end gas mask and filter. So mask, filter, stored like this, can screw straight on. Train, train in these as well. Don't fuck around. Train in these. As you know, hand in the back, over your head, filter on, purge the mask, train with this. I believe a gas mask is one of these things that is so, so undercarried in these situations. From, you don't know what's coming in, but you also don't know what's been hit. You, you don't know what environment, you're, you're working in an industrial area and a tank of something gets hit. You don't know what's gonna be in the air, you don't know with a lot of it. Better safe than sorry. Now, people will point and go, but you've only got one mask. True. And one, oh sorry, one mask, one filter. It's very true. These are very reliable. Probably should have two filters, but the filter will give you, depending on what you're exposed to, in the best case, hours. In the worst case, under an hour. In the worst case. I figure you can get upwind far enough in that amount of time. So I believe, truly, truly i believe this just doesn't go anywhere without me i think having a gas mask is one of those things in modern day that is very very needed to have as well as more tape you never know and i carry my gopro in the center of the tape it just it's nice and slots in there so i can actually find it in the bag too and learn where things actually are in your bag as well in here i have then uh my spare camera if needed and another usb c cable that i've then chucked in the bloody bag as well as my hat and another very small tripod for a microphone if needed so this is pretty much my breakdown kit of what i carry and this gets heavy quick this really does get heavy that doesn't look like there's that much kit here you know we've got helmet gas mask and some random bits and pieces 
There are some bits in here that I'm not carrying on this trip due to being replaced by other microphones and bits that I may normally have in more of a studio setting. But I think the big takeaways in this is documents on you, know you're in an environment where there could be foreign actors playing, be realistic about where you are. This is still a dangerous area. It, six metres from the camera, there was a missile hit the other day and if I was standing here, it would have fragged me up. Now, unlikely, you know, again, but still, you know, and good, fucking good medical gear. But you're better off keeping yourself out of trouble than getting into it. The days of cowboy shit, you know, it's one of those things. But seatbelts on, don't be silly. Med gear, know how to use the med gear. Know how to do it. It's not once try a tourniquet on and I'm good. No, no, no. Again and again and again. Train with it. Buy good equipment. Now, body armor or whatever can be very difficult to come by, uh, especially from Australia where it's illegal to own body armor. But sourcing it in country, well, you're going to have to rely on local contacts or contacts coming from somewhere like America bringing it in. But I love this job. I think I, think I do this job a lot safer than a lot of people. I think I actually understand how deadly the weapon systems being are used. I think a lot of people think that this that this is going to do a lot when something lands here. It's not. It's not. It's going to do better than nothing, but not being in that location is the best opportunity. You zoom on your fucking camera, you know. Sometimes you're going to get caught in those situations and that is just how it is. But if you can minimize your risk, no photograph, no no story is worth losing your legs over now i do take risks but i see a lot of journos i think take stupid risks thinking that this equipment is a juggernaut suit off call of duty and it's just it's just not but get good stuff when you can something i miss too is i always prefer having black stuff with blue patches like this because you can then take it off and go darker i guess if you are actually hiding from something but you know, making sure that you're still obviously press when it comes to the local authorities, everything getting around. Because if you see me in the dark silhouette, you know, in this area here, they were still finding Hamas terrorists days and days, weeks, weeks after the incident happened. I'm, cr I'm walking around this shit. It's hard. There's always a hard balance between how camouflaged you want to be and how much do you want to stand out because of that you are media. Where is that balance? Personally, for me, the whole blue body armor thing, no, I prefer patches that I can remove if needed depending on what I'm actually doing as well as wear decent clothes so a lot of guys in shorts I've been known to wear shorts and Hawaiian shirts but if you need to get on the ground need to get in the mud like I did over there in that bank the other day when the missiles came in had to go down good footwear jeans top even if it's hot it's the way to do it keep your stuff dry good med gear keep fit I'm, I'm I need to be fitter at the moment if I was rolling into Gaza with these guys Jesus I'd be struggling. So look after yourself, look after those around you. Even just down, guys, to things like reverse your car into a car park. Reverse your car in so you can get in and go quickly. You don't turning around, you're not stuffing around. Don't park right up the ass of someone else. So you can just go. But then you also need to look at the environment you're in. So say in Ukraine with a massive artillery threat, you may be better off at your hotel parking front in to protect the engine slightly if frag comes in. But it's all about, I guess, learning your environment. Like I said, with wearing helmets, that the wearing of helmets here does a lot because Hamas doesn't have them, especially when you're looking at something through thermal, night vision, far away, silhouette, whatever. And it's worth, it's actually worth looking into the, some of those how things are seen, but also being, being cognizant around people that may hate media whether they're locals, whether they're foreign players, whatever as well. But I know this is probably a boring breakdown of kit and I've got shit everywhere, but this is what I carry on me minus uh, the Sawyer filter, which I should have. So I'm carrying a lot of bottles of water in this and my car over here for that. Now, I work solo, uh, so my medical stuff is, you know, I have to rely a fair bit on my own ability. Now, I realise that that does sound stupid because... Well, if I lose both arms, I'm fucked. Uh, I can't put a tourniquet on. Absolutely. I've done a fair bit of medical training in the military, uh, but not enough to put a tourniquet on my leg with my teeth. Working in pairs and groups is always fantastic. Personally, I just don't do it. Not how I work. Um, but it is just, that's just me. So this is the kit that I carry on me every day out in the field. And I've got a hat in here as well, which is, I don't want to lose. It's my favorite hat. Okay, look after yourselves, and if you're getting after this job, get after it, but stay safe, and...
tell the truth. Thank you.